It's 2014. With the growing rise and availability of the internet, the world is at a turning point, and so is the Bednar family. They had four children, all of them either about to become or already one of the few teenagers left who would have a childhood that didn't revolve entirely around social media and online gaming. But even then, it still played a prominent role in their lives. Breck Bednar, the eldest son, was a well-rounded 14-year-old. Growing up in an affluent family based in Surrey, England, Breck was a member of the Air Training Corps, went to church on Sundays and was good with technology. When he wasn't outdoors, Breck would be learning something new on his laptop or playing video games like Battlefield and Call of Duty. It was online that Breck met another computer fanatic. His name was Lewis Danes, and he was an 18-year-old computer engineer from Essex who was some sort of a big shot in the online gaming community. Breck and Lewis had a lot in common. They both liked and played the same games, and they were both interested in computers and how they worked. But that was almost where the similarities between the two of them ended. Breck was the son of an American millionaire who'd followed a job opportunity in the oil industry to England a few years before Breck was born. He was part of a very tight-knit family, was popular and did well at school. Lewis, on the other hand, had practically nothing. His parents divorced when he was very young, and that left him to live with his mother before she remarried and relocated overseas, when Lewis was still a toddler. Instead of going to live with his father right away, Lewis was first put into care for some time, before he eventually moved in with his father and then his grandparents later on. He didn't get along well with others at school and had a hard time fitting in. He also potentially had Asperger's, which went undiagnosed and untreated until things were too late. But when Breck met Lewis online around the beginning of 2014, things hadn't gone too far just yet. The two of them began spending more time talking online, and that's when Breck's mother, Lauren Lefebvre, noticed a shift in Breck's behaviour. Breck reportedly became more reclusive and cut himself off from the rest of his family. He stopped going to church. He only wanted to spend time either talking to or spending time with Lewis online, and resented when he would have to do anything else. Lauren herself placed the blame for Breck's change of behaviour on his new friendship with Lewis, so she tried to cut the head off the snake. She later admitted that she had a limited understanding of technology at the time, but she managed to block Lewis's profile online. She also tried to limit the amount of time that Breck could spend on his laptop and what websites his laptop had access to. But especially when it comes to teenagers, when there's a will, there's a way. Breck and Lewis continued to speak with each other and Breck's parents grew more and more anxious over the path Breck seemed to be going down. Finally, they called the police and told them that they were concerned that Breck was being groomed by Lewis, especially when they found out that Lewis was telling Breck things that were clearly not true. Despite being a British citizen and having never even stepped foot on American soil, Lewis told Breck that he actually worked for the US government. When that story was in the bag, Danes then changed his tune and told Bednar that he made big money working for his own company and could even get Breck a job where he too could earn lots of money. Looking back on it, or even looking at it from the outside world, it's easy to spot the lie here, but Breck unfortunately believed every word. 
Feeling out of luck and out of options, Breck's parents asked the police for help. The police, in turn, made a record of the complaint, but didn't look into the matter any further. If they had, they would have found a crucial piece of information that could have potentially turned the tides. Danes was only 18 at the time, but he'd already had some serious allegations filed against him. Three years before Lewis and Breck first met online, Lewis was actually arrested. Only about 15 years old himself at this time, Lewis was held under suspicion of assaulting and raping another 15-year-old victim. Investigators at the time decided not to pursue the case, which meant that Lewis didn't face any punishments or even go to court for his alleged crimes, but his arrest still would have been visible on his record. This meant that when Breck's parents called to express concerns over Lewis and his potential interest in their son, the police could have validated those concerns and potentially even stepped in to caution Lewis. But as it was, no action was taken to come between the two of them and the Bednars were left to deal with the problems themselves. In February of 2014, Breck told them that he was going to sleep over at a friend's house that night. The friend lived nearby and the Bednars felt comfortable enough letting Breck go, so off he went. But as it often goes with teenagers, Breck hadn't exactly been entirely truthful with his parents. Breck was actually heading to Essex, about an hour and a half away from his hometown in Surrey and from where he'd told his parents that he would be that night. But the lie, unfortunately, goes deeper than that. That was because Breck wasn't going over to a friend's house. He was going to spend the night in Lewis's apartment. Breck and Lewis had never actually met in person before, but Breck must have felt confident enough in their friendship to go and spend the night with someone he'd met online. But things in life rarely go the way we think they will. Later that evening, Lewis placed his own phone call to the police, saying that he and Breck had gotten into a, quote, altercation, and only one of them had come out alive. Still on the phone with the dispatcher, Lewis then went on to explain more, quote, I grabbed the knife and stabbed him in the back of the neck, I believe somewhere near the brainstem. I don't remember exactly what happened, but the fight ended with me cutting his throat. Lewis said that they'd gotten into a fight with Breck, had taken a knife from the kitchen and threatened to kill himself. Lewis then grappled with Breck in an attempt to stop him, but when wrestling for the knife, Lewis had slipped and accidentally stabbed Breck before realising what had happened and intentionally slicing Breck's throat. Lewis claimed that he couldn't remember what happened after that, but when investigators and first responders arrived on the scene, they didn't find much truth in anything Lewis had already told them. Breck had clearly been tied up, his hands and feet bound with duct tape, and there was evidence of some sort of sexual activity having taken place between the two of them. Breck had been stabbed in the neck, leaving a wound so severe it would have taken him only seconds to die and would have left no possibility for some sort of fight to have occurred between them. Another look into the logistics of the case revealed that Lewis had put much more thought into his crime than he was trying to let on. There were records of him buying supplies, like duct tape and condoms, a month before the attack, and evidence that he'd orchestrated the entire evening. Knowing that Breck's parents were trying to come between them, Lewis had bought and given Breck a phone that they could use to communicate with each other, and on that, the investigators uncovered a chilling piece of evidence. 
For weeks, Lewis had been coaching Breck on what to say to his parents to make sure that they let Breck stay out that night and Breck had kept those messages, leaving a breadcrumb trail for the investigators to follow right back to the mastermind behind the crime. But there was still more to come. When first responders were at Lewis's flat trying to make sense of the scene, the police reached out and broke the tragic news to Breck's parents. But upstairs in Breck's house, something else was going on. The triplets were getting messages from concerned friends, asking if the news about Breck was true and sending their condolences. But the triplets hadn't actually heard anything from their parents or from the police yet. So how could their friends have found out what had happened to their brother before they had? The answer was another chilling twist in Breck's story. The friends that were reaching out to his siblings were reaching out because they'd heard the story not from the news or from the police, but from Lewis himself. Before making the phone call to the police that night, after he'd killed Breck, Danes had taken his time. He'd cleaned up, had a shower and taken a few pictures of Breck's body. He'd then shared those pictures with a few friends online, bragging about the fact that he'd just killed someone. The news had then travelled so quickly that Breck's siblings found out what happened to their brother at exactly the same time the police were downstairs informing their parents that their brother had been murdered. Lewis's attempts to cover his tracks and push the investigation off course by lying about the circumstances and claiming that he couldn't remember the rest got him absolutely nowhere. With so much evidence against him and pointing to this being a premeditated murder, Lewis Danes pled guilty before his case could even go to trial. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum 25 years to serve before he would be eligible for parole. In response to Breck's tragic story, the Surrey police reviewed their policies on handling online grooming allegations and believe that they have made strides forward more actively preventing similar cases to this one. Breck's parents created the Breck Foundation, which works to raise awareness of the dangers of online predators. About the foundation and the work that they do, Lauren Lefebvre, Breck's mother, said, quote, People think it only happens to the antisocial kids, but it's not true. I want Breck's tragedy to open the eyes of everyone, to recognise the dangers of online predators. It is a very real danger today. Breck was an amazing, clever, beautiful boy who had so much to give to the world. He was murdered on my birthday this year and so much of me has died as well.